The issue of Trudeau's fertilizer targets and the impact they would have on crop production and the availability of food within this period of a global food shortage remains one of great concern, and the latest information coming from Canadian farmers has put the issue further into the spotlight and raised more questions about the relevance of Trudeau's fertilizer targets. Leaders of the farming industry in the country came together to release a statement that said Trudeau's aim to achieve a 30% reduction in fertilizer use by 2030 was simply unachievable. They also fear that such a drastic and senseless reduction will significantly impact crop production in the country, which of course would worsen the current food crisis being experienced by Canadians. The facts have been made known to Trudeau, but because our prime minister has been bought by the WEF and is their modern-day slave, I am not optimistic that you will listen to the voice of reasoning from these farmers and adjust his so-called target. Meanwhile, on Wednesday, Fertilizer Canada and the Kanala Council of Canada co-published an analysis of the Liberal Climate Plan for the Agricultural Industry. The well-written analysis, which was put together by experts in the field, said nothing good about Trudeau's plan the 30% reduction in farmers' fertilizer use. The analysis said that farmers could manage a 14% reduction, but a 30% reduction was not realistically achievable without imposing significant costs on Canada's crop producers and potentially damaging the financial health of Canada's crop production sector. The general manager for Alberta Wheat and Barley Commissions, Tom Steve, told Global News that he had no faith that the 30% target set by Trudeau would be achieved. In his words, I believe what this report is saying is the 30% reduction target is not achievable without putting production and exports in jeopardy. And we have been saying that all along. It was an arbitrary target that was set somewhere in the government with no path as to how it was going to be achieved. What Steve said in his talk with Global News speaks volumes of how this target was ill-formed. Once, I mentioned that Trudeau was merely a copycat who took the exact same steps that his fellow WEF puppets took in matters relating to supposed climate change. I mentioned this speculatively after the news that the Dutch Prime Minister planned on achieving nitrogen and ammonia reductions in fertilizers used by Dutch farmers by 2030, and just like I said, Trudeau came in some time later with the same news for Canadian farmers. You might ask why I am saying this. The reason is that Trudeau probably didn't think the 30% through before blabbing to the press that he hoped to achieve that percent age for a reduction in fertilizer use. He must have thought that pegging the reduction at that percentage would please his WEF masters as that was what his fellow puppets were doing. Another case of Trudeau thinking only about himself and not giving as much as a single thought to how this would affect Canadians who are always on the receiving end of policies made by this man's government. Because you can't tell me that when things get tough because of his senseless goal, he would suffer a food shortage in 24 Sussex Drive or even any liberal politician at that. I bet he isn't even feeling the current food shortage experienced by the good people of Canada. Why else would be pushing for goals that would cripple the farming industry and worsen the food crisis in the country? The Liberals' plan on a 30% fertilizer reduction first came in late 2020, and it was only recently that consultations on it which are said to have taken months were concluded. The government claimed that between the years 2005 and 2019, fertilizer used by Canadian farmers had increased by 71%. They also said that over that period of time, fertilizer-related emissions of nitrous oxide increased by 54%. In all these, the government remains stupidly optimistic that they would achieve the 30% reduction with the help of technology and best practices required for the successful reduction in emissions. Steve said again, and I quote, that it's really taken our eye off the ball of what is needed in our industry, which is to become more efficient and productive and competitive. Most farmers already do whatever they can to reduce their use of fertilizer. It's their most expensive input. But of course, Trudeau won't want to hear any of that. So long as their way of reducing fertilizer use isn't his way, he won't be buying their methods. We all know how totalitarian this prime minister is, so it won't come as a surprise that he is bent on doing things his way, no matter how unjustifiable it is. But that doesn't mean that we just sit there and watch him ruin the country and end us by starvation. The president and chief executive of Fertilizer Canada, Karen Proud, was also opposed to what Trudeau planned to do with his 30% reduction. She said that there are already a number of industry accepted best practices in place when it comes to fertilizer management. These best practices include using the right fertilizer for the soil, as well as applying at the right time of year and in the right amounts. Proud warned that aiming for a 30% reduction was unviable because with that goal would come extra costs to crop production that would make it expensive, and because farming is a business to most, the farmers would want to recoup the extra money spent on crop production by upping the price of food, and this will lead to a further increment in food prices across the country. In her words, we need to be able to allow farmers to increase their productivity to offset the costs of implementing these best practices. The only way to do that is you allow them to increase yields or the math doesn't work. 
We can't ask farmers to invest in practices at a loss. In the month of August, the Canadian Federation of Independent Business released a poll where it was found that 72% of farmers were certain that the 30% fertilizer reduction plan by Trudeau would cause their crop yields to plummet. Taylor Brown, who is a policy analyst for the Canadian Federation of Independent Business, said that nitrogen was an essential element for the success of the agriculture sector. In his words, while the government of Canada's objective is to set a national target to reduce emissions, the primary method to achieve this is not to establish a mandatory reduction in fertilizer use. Coupled with rising costs and labor shortages, they are wondering how they're going to continue saving the world. In the same month the poll result was released, the Liberal Minister of Agriculture quickly told the media that concerns by farmers were only due to misinformation. On August 9th, the Agriculture Minister Marie-Claude Baibo said, and I quote, I just wanted to reiterate that we are really talking about reducing emissions caused by fertilizer. We are not talking about having any intention of limiting the use of fertilizer itself. The idea is to use them in the most sustainable way possible. What do you think of this latest news about Trudeau's fertilizer reduction targets? What do you think can be done to stop this tyrant from realizing this baseless dream of his? Please leave your thoughts in the comments section down below. Also, we created a Telegram group where we can come together and comment about the issues affecting our beloved country and how Trudeau wants to destroy a country he didn't even help build without fear of being censored. The link to the group is in the description. Please leave us a like on this video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet. Turn on post notifications so you don't miss out on any of our videos. Thanks for staying with us and I will see you in the next one.